Hey guys, it's MC Fix It here. We have a 2014 Nissan Frontier. We're gonna be changing out the pads and the rotors in the rear. And uh, this works from about a 2005 to 2019 uh, Nissan Frontier. So uh, let's go through the tools and the supplies and then we'll go ahead and jump on into uh, the full disassembly and reassembly of your brakes. Here are the tools and the supplies that I use for this project. We went with a Detroit Axle um, and the S31410, and this is for the rear, and then P1100. I'll link some other uh, options as well in the description. I like to wear gloves because your hands get filthy. Flathead screwdriver, torque wrenches. I used two different ones just because it was over 80 foot pounds for the one. Um, you're going to need some kind of caliper compressor. I know some people just use flathead screwdrivers. That's totally up to you. I would prefer to use an actual tool for that. A regular ratchet. We used a 21 for the wheels, 19 for the bracket bolts, and a 14 for the actual um, caliper. We used brake clean, breaker bar. If you have an impact, works really well as well. I also used just a basic hammer as well when I was knocking out the original pads. And so those are all the tools and the supplies I use to do this project. Um, if you live up north, I will say you're probably gonna need some uh, sledgehammer to get the rotor out and probably some kind of uh, penetrating oil would be helpful as well. This vehicle has been in the south its whole life. So they came off super nice and easy for the rotors. Go ahead and properly jack up your car. Okay, let's go ahead and start off. You're going to need a 21 millimeter and we're gonna go ahead and get all the lug nuts off. So go ahead and take all five lug nuts off. Um, if your tires have not been taken off in a while, a lot of times you can hit the top of it and it knocks it right off. Go ahead and move your tire out of the way. This thing has been properly jacked and has jack stands as well. You will wanna make sure you do that right. That is not something to uh, goof around on. Make sure you have it set up correctly. And I actually leave my jacks underneath as an extra stabilizer, um, as well as the jack stand is all screened to the right. So there are two caliper bolts right here and right here, and those are the first two we're gonna take off, and they are a 14 millimeter with a ratchet. going to break both of them loose at first and then we'll spin them out by hand that happens your caliper will just kind of naturally slide off um, you will want to put this someplace and a lot of times you can just set it right up here and that keeps it from falling and breaking so you don't want that uh, hose to get bent Next thing we're gonna do, and there's not much brake pads left on these, we're gonna go ahead and get a flathead and pop those off. So just take a flathead and a hammer and a little bit of persuasion, just bumping it, we'll knock it out of there. So that one did have a little bit of brake pad, but look how little this other side has. So you can see that one was almost down to the wear, even though the inside had a lot more to it. Um, that is definitely time to go ahead and change your brakes. We'll go ahead and pop off the old brackets too. So we do not need those, the new one came with that. And so that is all we're gonna take apart at this time. We're gonna go ahead and change out the rotor next. So there are two caliper bracket bolts here. 19 millimeter, you may want a breaker bar for that. These are normally on there pretty good. And this will give you the leverage you need to at least get them started. And then you got the lower one as well. And these guys are pretty long and the washer can fall out, so be careful of that. You will want that washer back on. The new ones in most kits will never come with anything like that, so. And that one fell off, so go ahead and put it back on. 
and then your bracket just comes straight out. Then we're gonna go ahead and move around to the front. So if you don't live in the north, you'll be able to just slide these out, but uh, I'm with my brother right now and we're in the south and these just slide out. Otherwise, you're gonna probably have to take a hammer and beat the snot out of these because they do not come off. This is a great time to go ahead and inspect your brake, all of your studs, make sure everything looks good. If you have a lot of buildup, you can take a wire brush and brush it off. Okay, you're gonna wanna put it on backwards at first, which may seem weird. So this is gonna be silly. I know it's in on backwards, but you need to take some brake clean of some sort and go ahead and spray it because they do put a film on this that you do not want uh, messing up your new brake pads. Something that they do at the factory. And then you will need to reuse this little piece. I just pulled it right out of here. It may help to have a flat head to do that. And I messed up. I needed to reorient this back up here. And so just pull it off if you did what I did. I then hit it up with some more brake clean. Can't ever use enough brake clean in my opinion. And then we're gonna go ahead and clean this up a little bit as well. If you have a metal uh, scraper pad or something like that, you can get these really nice and clean. Um, least thing you need to do is uh, go ahead and hit some brake clean on it. And then I like to go ahead and pull these out and re-lube these. And so it's pretty easy to pull them out and re-lube them. It does come with a small packet of grease. Just put a little bit in it, especially if there's still some on yours. Uh, but this pin does need grease each and every time. So just go ahead and hit that up real quick because you don't want to forget to do this. So we're going to go ahead and put this back on right in there. Gonna go ahead and grab the big bolts again. And I'm just starting them by hand. So both of these need to get put down. It's a 19 millimeter to 88 foot pounds of torque. Go ahead and grab an old brake pad. We're just gonna set it inside of there and this will help us to spin and compress the caliper. So we will need to spin this out a little bit. This will allow us with the new rotors and the pads to be able to successfully get this thing back far enough. And so I like to do it pretty slow so I will speed this up a couple of seconds in between each little quarter turn. Okay, once that is all the way back, we go ahead and loosen it up. And it's not gonna do anything because you're not pressing down on the brake pads, so we can go ahead and install our new hardware. So all the clips look identical, so it's just putting them in. So there's not a special one for the top or the bottom. Go ahead and put those in. So you'll notice the new brake pads are much, much bigger and thicker than the old ones. So before you put these ones on, you do need to grease these up a little bit. So we're gonna do the front one first. And so you just put a little bit of grease where it's gonna go into the slider. Some people do grease up the metal part that you're putting in, but this works as well. And then go ahead and slide that into place. And then we'll put grease on here once we get the other side done. Same thing, just a little bit of grease is all you need. And I also think the grease does kind of help slide it all into place. And then you're just gonna pinch out some grease right here. And I'll get the same thing on the other side just like so. So we're gonna go ahead and do the caliper, put that back on next. And this might be a little stiff to put on. That's a good thing. That means your brakes are back where they need to be. A lot of times you'll need to compress this a little bit to get it to go. I'm gonna go ahead and put our screws in by hand first. There's the bottom one. 
go ahead and do the top one. Go ahead and get your 14 millimeter and we're gonna be putting this to, okay, we're using a 14 millimeter, 26 foot pounds of torque, both bolts. Top and bottom. Boom, both of those are done. If you do like to uh, change out brake fluid, this is a great time to do it since you have the wheel off, um, or if you like to bleed the brake. Some people prefer bleeding the brake, some people prefer not to. If you are gonna bleed it, you're just gonna get, I think it's a 10 millimeter here with a hose. Pump down one, two, three, and hold it. Crack that with a pot, with a tube on it and a, like a Gatorade container or a pop container and then close it back off while they're still holding down. Do that two or three times. That bleeds any of the air bubbles out of it, but that's an optional thing you can do. Spray it one last time with your brake clean. Go ahead and put your wheel back on and tighten it down to spec and you are all done. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you do have any questions, go ahead and put it in the comment sections below. Hope you guys have a great day.